regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features of Sean. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. I don't know what fucking time of the day it is, but this is Regular Features, the podcast that's the same every week. I'm stuck here in this sweltering, lovely room with my two best buds, what I love to merge. Steve Hogarty, say uh, something. Ah, uh, hi. Nice voice, <laughs> That's Steve. not my voice. This is my voice. Thank Hello. you. <laughs> when you say a voice that's not yours, I mimic that voice. Who's the other guy? Matt Lees. It's me, Matt. It is, it's hotter than the devil's brioche in here. It's it is. roasting. I'm sweaty. We're in my bedroom where I like to keep the temperature nice and hot mm. so that the ladies take off their bras and I can see their tits. Mm. <laughs> it's not true. If this is the first time you've listened to this <laughs> podcast, I'm a gay man and I'm allowed to make jokes about seeing women on the tits. Titty, 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 titty. Actually, oh. Matt, you're straight. That's oh, not allowed. God, I am. And I'm married. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> i got to leave. Let's do a podcast and then i got to run. Who's got features? Or what's all the features about? i got a little feature I like to call a feature. i got a feature that I like to call Poop Poop All Aboard the Gravy Boat. <laughs> And my feature is about a new line of cosmetics brand that I like to call Dermatoleary. And he likes to call it Dermatoleary's 24 hour Dermatoleary. Shut the fuck up. It's Rap. real. No. Get ready for no, it. No, no. It's happening. No, 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 no. Let's go. Regular features, regular features. What is a feature coming next? Let us see. Before we begin the podcast proceedings for this evening, I want to tell you a little story about um, a reader I met in Belgium. Oh. Uh, yeah, her and her husband were came up to me in and kind of sec- sec- secretly said to me, "Ah, oh, we're readers," uh, you know, which is I love that. Every now and then, you're like secretly. Oh. Is that they spoke to you whilst covered in secretions? Yep. <laughs> yep. Of your creation. I didn't mean to do it, but look, they came <laughs> over and she said that she was a civil servant in Belgium, right. and she said that uh, she would often be kind of walking around listening to stuff. And at one point, she was walking around listening to the podcast whilst in the building of Parliament, and I, a particular part of the podcast caused her to crease and then look up with a mad grin on her face, um, and the person in front of her was the Prime Minister of Belgium. Uh, <laughs> hey, I thought you were going to say Roger Helmer. <laughs> yeah, he, he, a, hang, he hangs out in, in Brussels all he, the time. I think he's a he former does. MEP, but I imagine he hangs around just t- tutting at the iPads that everyone else has now. I'll tell you what, though, actually, I kind of, I mean, it's not... I'm not going to lie, the reason that all of these MEP assholes are really anti-EU is because they are racists, but I've been to Brussels, it's a bit of a shithole, and so I can also imagine why if the only part of Europe you ever went to was just Brussels via the Eurostar, you'd be like, what's the fucking point I, of I this? I do remember going there and thinking, the fuck is this doing? Yeah. Being a destination, how dare it? Exactly. Yeah. But then you go 20 minutes down the road and you're in Ghent, where it's like half the buildings are medieval castle. They've got a McDonald's in a fucking medieval building because it's just like, you can imagine someone being like, oh, can we have planning permission for a McDonald's to put in this like medieval castle? Now we've like, only got castles. Yeah, it's like, fuck it, it doesn't matter, does it? Just do what you like. Like, you can go smash to, them up. You can visit the European Parliament, the Parliamentarium. Which is like a theme park, an EU theme park. So you line your back and look at all the parliaments in the sky. <laughs> and you can um, walk around a giant map of Europe holding a special trolley. I've spoken about this on the podcast before. I believe you have. It's like a lectern that you wheel onto various um, cities around and then you, you, the EU. Then you dictate to them what they have to do because you're... Well, no, it tells you about you've it. you've got the trolley, that means you have the power. The power of the EU, telling other countries what they have to do. It tells you about the important red tape that came from that specific city. So, like, Volvo, which is a Scandi... Sweden? Scandi country? I oh, thought basic Volvo knowledge. was... Isn't Volvo German? I thought... I thought so. Yeah, like, isn't it Vorspring that... Duck technique? Duck, duck technique, yeah. Is that BMW? The Vorspring Duck Technique. Hey Google, where is Volvo from? Volvo was founded in the Heisingen. In the Heisingen. What's the Heisingen? Hey Google, what's the Heisingen? You can work it out from the context what he meant, Google, you fucking idiot. That's a massive Google as well, Steve. That's the biggest Google I've ever seen and it can't even do that. I like my Google's big. How? Why does that Google <laughs> need to be so big? 
Because it's, it's huge. Just filled with Google's knowledge. That Google is bigger than my fucking head. <laughs> like, I want a Google that you could drop on a baby and the baby would die. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, Fair enough. These That's, pathetic you, tiny Googles. You get to hover above the baby with your massive Google and choose which bit you want to crush. <laughs> knowledge is power. The power to crush a baby. With Google. Mm. So anyway, yeah, that's um, that's why, why if anyone has found themselves laughing at the podcast and looking uh, slightly mad in a way that embarrassed them with somebody who is more more important than the Prime Minister of Belgium, then do get in touch. Um, just uh, I'd love to know who the person in the world who has the most power that we've caused to unsettle, even in, if in indirectly. I fuck yeah, I've got no one. You've but, got you've got us. <laughs> no, I'm alone. I just don't. I just can't. Um, I hate the, I, the idea that our readers have friends and encounter people. It is time for the next regular feature. Take your Volvo, chances, roll the by dice. the way, is a Swedish company. They invented the three point seat belt and forfeit the patents so that every car so everyone could, have it. could use it because it's the Good safest way. Good on them. Of strapping yourself into a car. Honestly, like all these people who hate red tape, like I, they should go and band together, make their own little club, and they should build their own theme park, and then they should just keep going on the rides until they're all dead. Well, yeah, and the only thing you're allowed to use <laughs> on your as a seatbelt is red sticky tape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the last person to die on that roller coaster with no health and safety regulations <laughs> yeah. is really staunch. Yeah, exactly. I love that. They're like, I live by my own choices as I smash myself into this wall. That's Roger Helmer. That's that him gripping the bar of the version of stealth that just keeps going up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and he's building a stealth ride to heaven. Okay, um, yeah, let's do a feature. Monsieur Stefan Bodzin, electronic DJ musician and innovator of the Stefan Bodzin Divinitive Bodzone DVD exercise videotape. Welcome to my session, body boys. Am I German? No. Thanks. I'm hoping to lose a lot of weight. And sorry, my phone went off just then. Das ist nicht der modus operandi auf meinem Programm. Stefan Botzin's Botzon is all about getting in touch with seine Bode. Oh, I just got this flyer through the post and it seems to suggest that this was a weight loss thing. Look, I'll read it. <clears throat> Are you trapped in the plod zone where you should be in the bod zone? Join venerated German techno producer Stefan Bodzen for an exclusive journey into the world of his Bod Zone, trading KFC for BPM with an exercise program you just can't beat. Das ist meine funny pony! Yeah, so actually, I mean, it's a pretty weak pun, if I'm being honest, but English isn't your second language, so. Chatty, chatty, bum bum! Enough busy talking! <laughs> Mine lessons begin promptly at seven sharp. Sharp like the notes, like C sharp. <laughs> and late comers will not be admitted. I'm, I'm just not sure that it's actually what I signed up the for. The early comers will be chastised equally, though, I suppose. Is better when we all come together. But that is the lessons why of Steffi Bods in Stiffy Bod Zone. The Stiffy Bod Zone. Stefan, that doesn't sound like anything at all. Please, my boy, call me Steffi Bodbod. But... <laughs> I am a classically trained musician. Kevin, are you all right? I thought you were going to pop back to the car once you found out what time the spin class ended. It isn't a spin class, Brenda. Who on earth is this man, and how long have you been seeing each other? God, no, Brenda, it's nothing like that at all. You know how much I've done for this marriage. That's why I'm here now, for the love of Christ. Oh, don't act like the hot air balloon wedding was my idea. I just thought it would be nice to get you away from those bloody business meetings about ghosts and ghoulies. Spectral analysis and investigation conferences, Kevin. It's bullshit for pricks, Brenda. And if I thought there was any way I could get you away from that ludicrous scene without literally lifting the both of us hundreds of feet into the air, I would. And frankly, if you hadn't invited four maids of honour, I wouldn't need to lose 43 stone. Well, losing that way will be good for you anyway. There's no scientific way that you could possibly know that. Hushing my buzz, <laughs> pussycat 10 D's. 
Okay. No, I remember what I've written now. It's insane. Hushing meiner Buzz, Pussycatten. This is meiner stiffy safe zone. If seine body is nicked, if, if your body isn't, if you don't have eine dick. Hang on a minute, don't I recognize you? Nein, ich bin eine stranger. Du bist hast gerungen. Steve it. Is that you with a wet pink tea towel on your head? Nicht, ich bin ein baldy body board. Nein, Haaren auf meine Bonzen. Uh, meine Steven, bo- it is you. What the devil are you doing? Yes, I suppose there is little value on trying to crush this cat back into the said bank. Brenda, it is I, Stephen Pookie, paranormal investigator at large, currently engaging in covert spooky hunting behind enemy lines. Right, so what were you doing with them fluffy handcuffs? Well, tis vital when rigorously dealing with a naughty little spooky that one properly restricts, uh... When what's in that old Evian bottle labelled one good pint of Dr Pookie's lube? The spirits can chafe... In mysterious ways... Are you fucking my husband? Never in a million... I I am a professional hunter of the cruel and the unknown, grasping the hardest points within my reach and working each case to absolute complete... Are you fucking him, Kevin? Yes. Kevin, for fuck's sake. And what was that awful German bullshit all about? Well, it has been said in the past that I am a racist... Look, I'm sorry, love. I saw you hanging around in the corridor. It was just the first thing that came up on Stephen's Spotify. I have a playlist of artists who have names a bit like mine, and I've also got one called Spooky Zone. That song's about ghosts, uh, creepy minimal beats to study to. Kevin, are you done with this charlatan arsehole, or do we have to ring up the manager of Floaty Events and cancel the whole fucking thing? Babe, ghosts are serious business. I know that now. I can see that. I only got close to Mr. Pookie because I was trying to understand you better as a partner. But he doesn't actually know anything about ghosts, Kevin. He's just a weird man who always wears a hat and tries to wank off men in graveyards. Yeah, but the truth is out there, you know. He used to work with Nick Clegg. What? Oh my God, that's disgusting. Stay away from me and my spooky wife, you perverted bag of ectoplasmic fuckery. Well, I guess that's another case closed. (laughs) Sometimes the spooky just slips out of your hands and you decide that it's a Tuesday, you've got a lot on, and it just isn't to be. Until next time, spook hunters, stay spooky. Regular features, we are best friends, but you wouldn't know. Because you've no friends. And now it's time for Steve's regular feature, Steve's Dermat O'Leary Cosmetic Products, what I <laughs> own. <laughs> Okie dokie, then. As you all know, right. I have the face of a boy. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. My skin is porcelain smooth mm. and white as a sheet. Mm. N- nary a freckle nor a mole does spoil my immaculate complexion. Don't look too hard at my face, please, <laughs> as I speak. Computer, yes. yeah. enhance Steve's blemishes. <laughs> Oi, big Google. What's going on with Steve's face? There is one reason for this, and one reason alone. Or should I say man? For what is a reason but a man? And that man's name? <laughs> Dermot O'Leary. And what is a reason but a man with legs? (laughs) Absolutely. An X Factor host, backstage presenter, (laughs) and, did you know, sideline in cosmetic products. (laughs) I don't... Is this true, Steve? (laughs) Yes, it is. Dermatological products. Dermatological products. Oh, fuck yes, of course. (laughs) Because it's very logical for Dermatolary to launch his own brand. The thing of, is, like, uh, Lyracil, right? He's almost, spotty people. He's almost <laughs> definitely taking the piss, but at the same time, like, they've just opened in London Wahlburgers, which is literally Mark Wahlburgers burger joint, and they were all over Chicago. So at this point, I fucking believe anything. <laughs> but I was just lost because I didn't know whether it was this was just a, a feature based on a an outlandish PR email he'd had about Dermot O'Leary. That's entirely possible as well. I brought you some Dermot O'Leary products. Okay. Is this actually real? This is real. This 
is it's called 24 Hour Derma O'Leary. Oh my God! This is around, real. Around the clock. Around the clock, Dermot, Dermot O'Leary. Oh, he for looks fuck's sake! You. You're not even joking. This isn't a joke. It's I not mean, a joke. That's the thing. Is I was like, oh, it might not be a joke because the world's gone mad. But no, the world has gone completely mad. He looks after you from morning until night, and he doesn't stop. Then he's on your face while you sleep. It's when a bit the night sinister. comes and your eyes are feeling bleary. Slap on a load of Dermot O'Leary. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's the fact he says "sleep well" on it. There's something about a man saying to you, so "You don't know." saying sleep well <laughs> just as bit. you apply a cream he just gave to you <laughs> well, yes that's right go to sleep I'm oh. so glad you brought that up Matthew that, that the prospect of Dermot O'Leary offering you creams salves balms Hang on, is, this fi- is it fine to put it on my face he's already like, put it on his face and um, we're just talking about how- do not get it near your eyes it stings <laughs> like a mother. <laughs> It really does. Thank God I shut my eyes <laughs> while smearing it all over my fucking eyelids. <laughs> you smear everything you're handed over your face. Yes. That is going to... how I got where I am today. <laughs> That's going to begin to sting in about 20 seconds, like, but we'll return to you. Um, Matt. <laughs> it, has, it has given him a wonderful glow, though. It's warming me up. You do look great. You look fantastic. Wow, you look like Dermot. You look exactly like Dermot O'Leary now. Oh, my God. I wish I could do a perfect Dermot O'Leary impression. That'd be really on point right now. That'd be great. I... Oh, welcome to X Factor. <laughs> Today, we got some acts for you. It's a fucking dog. I could do a trick. <laughs> and then I'll do a song. <laughs> and then he'll do a trick. And then look at the camera. It's like he knows. <laughs> uh, Dermot O'Leary, the packaging for Dermot O'Leary's cosmetic products uh, comes with weirdly laddie copywriting mm. on the side. So... This is a, a morning cream that I was sent. What, where, when someone's just died? <laughs> <laughs> the cream you produce while mourning. <laughs> <laughs> Please enjoy the cream of my misery. <laughs> Somebody must use it. It's such a waste otherwise. I pumped this one out after a dear friend had died in a helicopter. <laughs> Demo O'Leary, morning cream. He, on the side of his packet, this is the, on the side of the package, this is what's written. Good morning. Your face is about to take a battering. This chap here is to take care of things from our end. Use him wisely. He's your best friend right now. What the fuck? Are you okay. joking? I can't that is, what, that is what Dermot O'Leary wrote, personally. Am I getting negged by a cream? You've just woken up next to a woman, maybe, that you... Bagged in a knocking shop the night before. I'm, like, I'm, the, I'm, I'm assuming the dog just... from X Factor. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's the it's the line. Your face She's not your is friend. about to... my cream on your face is your friend, so she doesn't see you without what I might add. It's a face that stings a lot, <laughs> and <laughs> especially around the crinkles around your eyeballs. My say? eyeballs are okay, but the crinkles around them, which probably are absorbing a bit more cream, are they burning? Feel like I might be getting an X-Man power. (laughs) (laughs) Well, your crow's feet are evaporating. (laughs) You look incredible. It's because his face is melting. (laughs) There's nothing, just a lump. I mean, like, what was one of those lines was like, I am your, uh, this cream is your only friend now, no one else understands you, don't listen to them. And by it's the way, your face you. is about to take a battering. Is that and what some, I said? Yeah, your face is about to take a battering. I don't want like, my I'm face. Come in, I'm going to, Dermot is going to walk into this room and fuck you up. <laughs> I and don't want that before Your bed. last friend in the world Direction is this <laughs> bottle of cream. <laughs> Directions for use. Squeeze a pea-sized amount onto your knuckles <laughs> and punch yourself into the required areas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't like it. I mean, I imagine some people would like to be roughed up by Dermot O'Leary before bed, but f- f- frankly, I'll stick with E45. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steve both put our hands up then. <laughs> He's a very handsome man. He is. I'm, and I'm yeah, that's why he was a choice pick to be the face of a of a cosmetics brand. But were they a, a line playing of products on the... that I'm sure he's had almost no involvement in whatsoever. <laughs> but were they playing on the Dermot O'Leary dermatological thing, do you think? No, that's way too clever for them. These stupid cosmetics people. <laughs> yes, with their fucking ideas. millions of thousands. <laughs> they're really fucking highly paid PR companies <laughs> who will never have an idea. <laughs> the pun that we came up with in four <laughs> seconds. They never think of anything <laughs> so, <laughs> so incredible. 
Well, um, yeah, I just thought I'd give you an insight into my youthful complexion because I know... I've been jealous of it for such a long time. I look at photos of you next to me and you just don't age and I just shrivel like a bad raisin and I just get so angry. I, I used to be angry, but having this stuff all over my face, I now know the pain he goes through to stay so beautiful. You are bleeding from your eyes now. It's like... I'm the man from Jessica Jones season three who <laughs> bleeds when you touch me with evil. I'm glad I queued up that joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I've seen of people bleeding from their face from recently. <laughs> regular features, regular features, regular features now. <laughs> That's awful. Right, so this is my feature and... Um, I think it's going to start a new chain of features because I just sat on the train for 10 minutes just typing and deleting sentences until one thought, OK, I'm going to run with that. <laughs> so um, at the end of this one, I'm going to ask people to tweet me hooking sentences that they think I can use as a feature. The, the, the feature that I ended up writing... The, well, the, the sentence that I ended up writing at the beginning of this one was... All aboard the gravy boat. <laughs> this is how my feature, Good Boys Go to Marrakesh, <laughs> also started. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm just sat there thinking... Isn't that how all features... Mine started today with just me writing Steffi Bods in Bod Zone. And that was then And then you have else. to just retrofit. <laughs> yeah. Just put comedy on it. I like that you're chucking it out. It's becoming a feature franchise. Do you want to run a feature? Have you got the skills? Yeah, have, can you come up with a... a tweetable sentence that you want me to turn into a feature without any financial recompense <laughs> maybe tweet me <laughs> so this is tweet what... me or eat me I don't give a fuck Log dog to Blythe so after writing all aboard the gravy boat this is what happened when I was a child a very small child dinner times could be treacherous I remember one time I tumbled from my father's spoon and fell into the gravy boat. Oh, I splashed and I screamed while my father's massive face swooshed across the skyline like a big friendly Dracula, searching for the sounds of his son's minuscule distress. Down here, Dad! I'm in the gravy boat! I cried. But my voice was in such a high register that the sound waves barely touched the sides of his cavernous ears. Frustratingly, I had been quickly covered in gravy, which against a background of gravy, with me-sized lumps in it, made for an impenetrable camouflage. Sensing, on a level beyond consciousness maybe, that his son was in peril, my father made an indecipherable moan of displeasure that resonated right in my guts and pooper. <laughs> a wisp of smoke curled from his nostrils, and his eyes rumbled around in their sockets like stone temple doors. But he could not see me at all. He put his stone... His, he put his spoon down, I should say, with a clang, and honked urgently in a way that was in perfect resonance with my sphincter. To this day, I can never say whether or not I shit into that gravy. You just can't tell when, you, when, you're being, when, you, when your body is resonating so much with the, the, your father's booming voice. <laughs> anyway, I was beginning to panic. I had to get out of the gravy boat quickly. But luckily, I had a plan. My mother, who is perfectly normal size as opposed to the gigantic ness of my father, I mean, not that you asked, you, you bastards. <laughs> my mother for her sins, is notorious to the rest of family for serving gravy at a sub-piping temperature. There's a hair's breadth, my father likes to quip in the family group chat. Between the temperature of my mother's gravy... Well, you know, he meant me when he said that. Between the temperature of your mother's gravy and the temperature of my mother's body as they lowered her into her grave. <laughs> <laughs> he did this joke. A lot, and my mum's response to this insult in the chat, we have to communicate through the chat because we're at such different sizes that we can't... It's not easy to communicate, but I can't hear me. He's just a booming voice. My mum could probably convey messages from one to the other, but she chooses not to. 
But anyway, but my mum's response to the insults, at first she just laughed along. After a week, she did an eye roll emoji. And after a month, she gave in an attempt to workshop the joke with him, suggesting that perhaps the distance between the word mother and grave in the punchline was too great for it to be an obvious reference to the mother's gravy setup in the first line. And she just suggested that maybe this led to the, the pun lacking the kind of punchy impact that my father seemed to think it had. I love that he could write... You can write a a good yet poorly constructed joke, and then just put the criticism of the joke in immediately afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> rather than uh, improve it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's which is fine. Yeah, the, my, well, that's 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 well, you might say that. Maybe I'm the only one in my family who's got a critical eye with me, my mum, maybe. <laughs> but my dad replied to this with, "Well, it certainly may not have as much punchy impact as your gravy, darling." And that's worth it. To this day, when I saw my mum pick up the chat later on, I saw her throw her hands up in despair at my father's ability to deliver an insult that didn't work at all, whilst looking really pleased with himself. It's fucking infuriating. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Dropping character for a minute. That's the thing I hate most in the pub. It's the thing that drives me fucking wild when people give an insult that doesn't work and then laugh. And because they're laughing, other people laugh. And I think, you just insulted someone badly. Yeah. And it, you've made it sound like it worked just because you're a fucking dickhead. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Good. That's good. Not <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. After they say so much shit. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not it. It's the thing I hate the most. Doesn't work. And if you were to call them on it, everyone would just think you didn't get the insult. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking killjoy. No, I just know how fucking jokes work. A year after the first time he did the insult... She stopped responding, but I do now suspect that my mother is deliberately cooling the gravy to below the temperature of a corpse, just to make my father's insult fail on another hidden level. (laughs) Sometimes I'm so very glad that I am so small that my best friend, a bee, can carry me around on garden adventures (laughs) far away from the house Wi-Fi and... Of escaping the, the the family group chat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I never hit puberty and expand a hundredfold in every dimension while I am still riding him. It would be awful to crush him with my newly massive ass. Anyway, this is all on the side, but it's important background. It's why. That information explains why I wasn't boiling alive in a gravy boat full of hot, hot granule slop. And it meant that I could just blot my arms around like it was going out of fashion and simulate a kind of bubbling in the skin on the gravy. My dad would see the bubbles, think that the gravy was for once hot, and he would instinctively enter sleuth mode. (laughs) To cut a long story short, my dad saw the bubbles and was so excited to get hot gravy that he thought it was my mum calling a truce in what he thought was a 20-year-long war of attrition. Thinking I was out the house, when I was anything but, they began to have all manner of how's your father all through the kitchen, and through a combination of confusion, upset and hormonal what have you, I started going through puberty just as they were about to have one directly above me. The world shrank about me as I became a man, and to cut a long story short again, that's how I ended up motorboating my mother with my farmer's, my father's suddenly normal-sized dick crammed against my spine. I slowly pulled out my phone and left the group chat. <laughs> it was a week before my father finally thought to ask, What were you doing in my spoon in the first place? And I said, well, I don't think you want to bring up spooning with me, referring to the incident with his dick in my back. I know it wasn't technically spooning, but as far as making frustratingly incorrect jokes are concerned, I guess I'm my father's son after all. (laughs) These days, I drive a gravy boat up and down the Thames. (laughs) And um, and it it was there that I met my first true friend, Zim Big Bang Boing and became his first ever big boy. <gasps> bum, bum. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fucking bombshell. Just throw that in at the end. The big boys have a voice. I forgot to change to a booming voice, but I think it's nice they don't have a booming voice. 
Oh. Trying to build a theory of everything. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to build this shit. <laughs> it all leads back to big boys. <laughs> I was made for regular features. You were made for... Well, thank you for listening to Regular Features, the podcast that is exactly the same every single week. As always, it's been me, Matt Lee, is joined by... Steve Hogarty, the boy wonder. And John Log Blythe, Always just manager three. and of the local pub that you love to go to all the time, the King Billy in Nottingham. Thanks to James and <laughs> last week who came in. They came all the way from fucking Melbourne. You mentioned them last week, but you, yeah. you uh, actually bleeped her name out. Yes, I did bleep her name out because she doesn't listen to the podcast. Okay, well, we'll bleep I'm going to do, do it again. We'll have to bleep it out again now, Log. Thanks. And that's a very subtle plug. One of your more subtle ones. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but do visit the King Billy pub. It's the official pub of regular features. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair, safe that's to say. Right? Safe, but yeah. it's one way to support the podcast, isn't it? It is one way to sort, support one part of the podcast. No, I mean, I'm joking. Like, Log's wonderful. It's the only place you can go it's to one way to space. pay off Log's bloody mortgage. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, it's the yeah. best way to pay off so Log's I'm, fucking mortgage. So I can buy more houses. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Rent them out after to another. Who turned Log into our fucking landlord? I'm gonna juggle them houses. Oh, so big. <laughs> anyway, if you want to support this, uh, whatever this is, you can do so by going to patreon.com. It's a podcast, thanks. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash regular features and you can give as much or as little as you think this is worth per episode. Or some people just gave it like, okay, give us $50 for a month. Just being like, my boys, this is for you. But now I must leave like the elves in Lord of the Rings. This week, I think we've got one new donor. Yeah. Yeah? Do you remember his name? I told uh, it to you. I think you said his name was David Armstrong. Yes, I remember David Armstrong because it sounded like he got strong arms and basically that's the kind of shit that sticks with me. I was <laughs> thinking like the, the moon stuff. He's probably heard that before. Hey, David, have, you ever, have anyone made any jokes about the moon? 50th to you? anniversary of oh, the moon right. landing coming up mm. this year. Busy time for all Armstrongs around the world. Yeah, they all get called in to bake cakes that look like the moon. So good luck making your cake and thank you very much for uh, the money. He's raised his pledge. Has he? Yeah, so if you are already pledging, and you think, wow, I need to do even more. Yeah, why yeah. not be like David and shoot for the moon? Nice. Oh, so good. <laughs> thanks, so good. thanks. That was a kind of almost like a joke, I thought. I thought that was almost a joke. No, it wasn't a joke. I mean, it, it wasn't was a, just a really, really good yeah, word of continuity no, on a local right. radio no, station. No, it wasn't. It was like, yeah, no, you're, you're right. Thank you for listening. Bye. Craters. Oh.